Hi guys, good morning. 7.52 here in London, Thursday the 13th of June. Uh, as you can see on my right hand side, there's a comment that's come through this morning uh, of a, an incident uh, in the Gulf of Oman, Explo explosions affecting two oil tankers. We'll have a quick look over at the chart. As things are moving this morning, we've already had uh, a 3.2% move higher uh, in the price of, of WTI. Uh, and Brent decent push from 51.50 all the way above 53 dollars. We are seeing a bit of that uh, retracing now, just as it comes back below the R1. So worth keeping uh, a close eye on the the price of oil here. A bit of uh, risk off in the market as well. We are starting to see a bit of a, a reversal. So keeping a an eye uh, and ear close to the ground on any developments here. Uh, if we go back to that story, and we'll have a, a quick look over oil again um, following yesterday's DOEs, which saw price tumble again. But if we have a quick look why this is important, uh, it comes a month after an attack on four oil tankers off the UAE in the Gulf of Oman. The US blaming uh, Iran for that attack. Uh, and then again today saying there had been two explosions uh, where these oil tankers had sent distress signals. Uh, Pakistan uh, sources also reported the incident, uh, and this was this was reported. If we go back to the chart, just after seven o'clock, so just as I was getting in the market, we were trading uh, around 51.50. Not too much going on, and then it started to get traction. You had it from Bloomberg uh, on the TV uh, is where I heard it, uh, and then over the the headlines as well on the news wires, we saw a, a decent push higher here. Uh, for crude oil. How has that affected the other markets this morning? I just dragged that down where you can see already this morning gold was pushing uh, slightly higher but that has continued from seven o'clock as well uh, up to near the high of the day. So worth keeping an eye on just the whole zone uh, as a whole here for, for gold. You can see yesterday's highs, today highs uh, marking up there as we are starting to see a bit of risk on in the market. Equities unsure really what to do. Uh, the higher oil price can, of course, help uh, equities push higher, but being risk uh, a risk uh, in the market, we can see a slight risk off. And equities actually, since uh, seven o'clock, have been pretty flat. Uh, we had a, a brief push higher, helped by oil price, only to come back lower uh, as we are seeing gold push on. And T notes uh, relatively unmoved by this, but certainly one to, to keep an eye on for, for any uh, oil traders uh, as we go through. The, the beginning of the session uh, as well. Elsewhere, uh, things to, to be aware of, if we go back to um, what happened uh, overnight, uh, not overnight, uh, yesterday uh, with the, the Brexit, Brexit headlines, you can see that the headline here was what we talked about in, in the briefing yesterday, how it could be quite important going forward and almost throw a, an obstacle in the way of anyone favouring a uh, a no deal or uh, a harder Brexit, if you like, and, and the MPs rejected this Labour cross-party plan for a no deal vote. Uh, this uh, came at 3.09 to 298, so quite tight. We were talking about how effectively if all Labour voted, you would just need three Conservatives to swing the vote as the DUP uh, obviously helped with their uh, majority, but that wasn't to be the case. If we have a quick look over at the pounds on the on the charts, you can see. Uh, if I just put this back onto a five minute, it won't take you long to work out where this candle was on this deal not getting passed. So the idea behind the the deal was that it would have given the opponents uh, of a no deal Brexit the chance to table legalisation to thwart the UK leaving without any agreement on the 31st of October deadline. So say that was going to be the case and we were going to leave no deal, Labour would have basically been able to uh, attempt to stop it. That is now not the case and you can see from where that was released uh, yesterday, just before five o'clock, we had a decent push lower um, down to the lows of 127.36 and the futures starting at 127.87. Uh, 87. So 50 tick move, I think that's fair enough. I think it, uh, we would have seen a much bigger reaction to the upside if it had been the opposite, if Labour had got that through. We'd have seen a decent push on, uh, however, not to, to be the case. And the pound since then, well, it's, if anything, just drifted a bit lower. I did say to uh, the trainees um, in, in the first stage of our programme yesterday how I, I was surprised it didn't really move a bit more. 
you are starting to see that just drift down uh, a bit this morning. Of course, today we, we do as well have the um, the first round of the um, the Conservative ballot, uh, if you like. So the that all starts to, to kick off today and, and expecting the results sometime after one o'clock. So trading the pound today, there's no 9.30 data. So you're probably still looking for a follow through from the uh, the Labour decision or the Labour cross party vote yesterday, which was net negative for the pound. So probably still looking for a short as we build up into uh, this this ballot. Any comments that obviously come out, any leaks perhaps could move things around. But in, in all truth, I think most likelihood is that Boris is going to have a, a healthy lead here. It's going to look like he's nailed on. And I would argue that there wouldn't really be a trading opportunity for that. When would there be? Well, if uh, some of the other candidates had a, a healthier, healthier um, number of votes, uh, and it might indicate uh, a Brexit decision elsewhere come the 31st uh, of October. So that all begins to, today. The last 10 or the final 10 rivals facing the first ballot uh, of those Tory MPs. Um, Conservatives will begin the process to choose the new leader and the next Prime Minister uh, this morning. Voting, as we said, will take place in a secret ballot in the Commons and expected uh, result just after one uh, o'clock. Uh, this afternoon so afternoon well that will be the the main focus uh, in the early part of that any of the 10 candidates who fails to secure 17 votes will be eliminated now if we have a quick look over uh, at this pie pie chart here you can see the percentage of and this is from yesterday uh, of where um, the conservative MPs are looking to who they are looking to back Boris Johnson uh, with 80 uh, so he's safely through, as is Gove, Hunt, and Dominic Raab, and potentially uh, Javid as well. But you can see the others, the, the remaining five there, all below the 17. Now, there hasn't been 100% uh, of people that have put their, uh, their backing behind someone. I think of this tweet, it's about 70, 80%. I'll confirm that in a moment. But you can see anyone that doesn't get 17 votes would be dismissed. So that's worth uh, thinking about later. I think if Rory Stewart, he's, he's the main one. If you're, if you're looking for the pound to push higher here, Rory Stewart is one that you want to get through. You want him to, to get that 17. That might be a bit of a shock to the market. Okay, maybe there is some room for this softer Brexit. But after the vote we saw yesterday, I would be incredibly surprised. The market would be pretty surprised as well. So I don't really see... Uh, that happening but of course that's what moves markets the most the unexpected so one to keep an eye out come one o'clock uh, so any of those 10 candidates who don't get the 17 votes they'll be gone see you later and we move on and do the same again um, uh, well, next week actually uh, and then the two most popular MPs moving to a runoff uh, of Tory party members the winner of the contest uh, and of course this you know when it's the final two it goes to the 100 and whatever thousand uh, conservative members and they would vote uh, if we're going by what is on here looking like it's going to be Boris Johnson and then between Hunt and Gove I think that is uh, what I would expect as well of course things can change it might be after the first round those who put their name into you know Leadsom or Stewart or Hancock they may of course, well, they of course will have to then change their votes to someone else and we might start getting a couple of stories about uh, someone you know putting all their uh, their votes behind you know one of the not well not the front run of Boris Johnson but the others and we could start to see things develop from there but today I think the only opportunity is going to be if maybe Dominic Raab gets a lot more than expected who's favouring of the the no deal perhaps more than Boris Johnson at the moment after his comments yesterday or and that would obviously lead to the pound going lower or if Rory Stewart gets through and I think that we'll see pound going higher. I'd say those are the upper opportunities today, uh, anyway, ahead of this week's vote. Of course, next week it continues. Uh, and then the 22nd of June uh, will be the, the vote where uh, the majority, uh, what the Conservative members will effectively vote on the final two. And then expected to be announced the winner 
uh, and the next Prime Minister on the 22nd of July. Doesn't leave them much time to get things through, of course, with your, your late August recess and everything that's going on in, in September, October with Europe and the, the new European Commissioner being elected. Well, it doesn't leave much time before the 31st of August. So who's looking like they're going to get through? Gove, Javid, Raab, Hunt and, of course, Boris uh, as well. Those ones that are just struggling a bit, Hancock, Stewart, Ledsom, Harper and McVeigh, they're hoping to, to get through and then build momentum, if you like, to in, in, into the next vote. I really, really wouldn't be surprised if it's just those five. If it's just those five and potentially Hancock as he's on 15 as well. Um, we're, we're, I mean, time will tell. Let's have a quick look over at the bookies odds on, uh, on your odds checker. If we just say use Labricks for some reason, Skybet have, have taken it off. Labricks have got Boris Johnson one to two, so that's the the shortest he's been certainly for a while. Hunt and Ledson, unbelievable. I don't really understand why Ledson's third favourite, according to to um, well to Labricks at ten to one. So if we're looking here, Goves at twelves, Hunt five. Yeah, I mean I guess it makes sense. Ledson, I'd, I'd, I'd be surprised looking at. Uh, certainly this uh, from, from Guido Fawkes who I definitely would recommend following doesn't look like they're going to get much uh, uh, way through so probably not the best opportunity there to uh, to be back in uh, her um, reaction of the market if we have a quick look over the pound let's just go through those scenarios I was mentioning Rory Stewart through I think we get back up to at least the pivot low of uh, yesterday and maybe beyond uh, Dominic Raab perhaps if he was to you know take a big chunk out of that uh, 80 of Boris, which would, you know, when you've got the public back in uh, already, uh, that'd be quite unusual. I would say you get down to 127 uh, S2, 126.90 uh, relatively quickly. But for now, price contained and going back, uh, moving off the, the back of uh, a Labour decision, the Labour vote yesterday, which uh, obviously provided a bit of an opportunity, the bigger one would have been the other way uh, round. Um, equities yesterday let's have a quick look over the charts you can see just over the last few minutes we have been drifting higher we put this on a, a 60 minute we have been drifting lower we have been drifting lower and uh, there's a good good little chart here from from Bloomberg as I'll just bring this in um, global stocks catching breath after a seven day rally it's a bit of that it, it, I wouldn't really say necessarily there's a massive game changing reason that stocks are now drifting lower uh, the S&P, great little uh, win streak for, for this month so far, nice push higher, 2900, bit of resistance, failure to push, push on, we're just drifting down uh, a bit, but you know, if we take where we're trading now, well, it's exactly where price closed last Friday. Nothing to, to worry about uh, at the moment. Uh, yesterday was weighed down by energy, tech and financial stocks. Uh, we saw treasuries push on a bit, gold as well, uh, certainly into the beginning of the afternoon, although it did come a bit lower last night uh, before pushing on uh, today. So relatively flat, to be honest, yesterday. I wouldn't say there was much in the way of, of a big move uh, for, for stocks. Um, obviously, with, with oil pushing down uh, yesterday to the back of the, the session, that did weigh on things certainly overnight. But if we have a quick look over at oil, just to bring us up to date again, we're still nicely above where we were this morning following the, the Gulf of Oman uh, fire or the reports of that, the tankers that are, are on fire. Um, interestingly, this was uh, reported uh, yesterday and, obviously, and then uh, again released on the wires this morning. Trump says he has no deadline for imposing further tariffs on China. He's got the market in his back pocket. He will get that China deal through when he wants. I firmly, firmly believe that. And for me, this is just saying it, it's not right now. Uh, G20, back end of the month, could be. Uh, we'll come on to a couple of tweets by the Global Times. Xi, uh, um, well, Hu Xi Jin, I don't want to say his name wrong. Hu Xi Jin, a couple of comments he said uh, about that, uh, about the deal even getting done at G20. That's an opportunity. Uh, it looks like the last couple of days, if the last couple of days are anything to go by, uh, things will just be drifting lower into that. But listen, I, I honestly do think come the, the back end of the year, we will have a deal in place and it's going to be fabulous um, as, uh, as, uh, or tremendous, 
uh, as Trump would say. But yeah, here's the headline. Trump says he has no deadline for imposing um, the tariffs on China. He was saying this to uh, reporters. I have no deadline. My deadline is what's up here. And then he pointed to his head uh, in typical Trump fashion. Uh, he told reporters yesterday, we'll figure out uh, the deadline. Those comments to, to be aware of um, from from Hu Zhijin. As far as I know, China's state media will publish more heavyweight commentaries criticizing the U.S. and demonstrating China's determination. It's rare to see scathing attacks against the U.S. and state media. This shows Beijing is preparing for China-U.S. ties getting further worsening. So that's something just to think about today. Look, you've got T-notes pushing on, gold are higher, stocks are mixed. Maybe this morning preferring the opportunity to look to go short today last couple of days Trump hasn't been too positive he hasn't been too positive so uh, if anything favoring that to drift lower today but I do think there, there'll be a good run at uh, all time highs again soon um, another tweet from yesterday a more recent one from Hu Jin. from information I have access to there is no sign that China is relaxing its countermeasures against the US trade war Chinese basically have no trust in the mild signals the US side sent occasionally. Will there be a breakthrough at G20? I dare not to be optimistic at this moment. It's worth having uh, you know, a look at these, these tweets and following uh, Hu Zhijin, who uh, only really a couple of, I'd say a month ago, wasn't uh, as important, but his tweets are talked about, they're squawked about. It's definitely someone to follow if you don't already. And I'm on the Amplify Twitter account, and I'm gonna follow them right now. Um, to, to make sure that we do got to pre, uh, practice what you preach of course going back to that, that Trump headline of course Trump had threatened to raise uh, tariffs on Chinese goods if Xi uh, doesn't meet him at the G20 so that would be obviously a big mover that effectively I would say isn't really priced in we've had a decent recovery of late so if they were not to get something done at G20 you would come down lower but of course if he was to implement them China, uh, Trump would still say they have a fabulous relationship, that he received a, an amazing letter, and they're going to get the best deal done uh, ever uh, in typical Trump fashion. If it's bad, let's make it good. Um, yesterday as well, Wilbur Ross, uh, the, the Commerce Secretary, played down the chance of a meeting as well. Um, and of course, uh, as yesterday's inflation number was, was worse, um, also stepping up the uh, the criticism of the Fed urging the central bank to reconsider the hike that we had back in December. Quick look at that data from yesterday. If I just bring this into picture here, you can see opportunity wise, it wasn't amazing. You had a, a slight miss on the, on the core year on year 0.1 uh, and the headline 0.1 as well. That's not enough, really. It's not enough for uh, a massive reaction either way. And, we have a quick look at the euro dollar uh, at the time. We, we spiked higher on that miss, uh, only to come back down. You can see we drifted lower into the back end of the session. Uh, and longer term, let's have a quick look here at the euro. It has been messy, hasn't it? You know, we've there have certainly been confusing people as of late. When's going to be a good opportunity to, to get short this market and uh, see a reversal? <sighs> I mean, I probably want a bit more probably want a bit more here this trend line break of that uh, would, would perhaps later on be uh, the this low area as well that we've had a double bottom on then we might start to see a, a further push lower why do I look at that trend line well if we have a look uh, certainly on the recent uh, trend of these markets any decent recovery is broken through uh, by a trend line so that's something I would be favoring for euro dollar when can we get that key that maybe we are going back down time will tell going through uh, eight o'clock having a quick look over european stocks choppy as usual higher lower back to where we were looks pretty much like the s p does here line in the sand pivot high of the morning uh, that could be your cue to to get long if we can confirm a break above that pivot to the downside it's choppy but you have a trend line from the the lows of the day or lows of the uh, sort of 6 a.m. candle uh, break of that might lead to a further rundown to the downside uh, as well. Uh, so that yet yeah, that those uh, inflation numbers not great. Also overnight we had some data out of Australia. We'll bring the the chart into picture just before we we go through that. Looking at that we spiked higher to come lower. Um, yeah, so it was perceived to be worse. 
Um, the employment, if we just bring this in, the employment change was positive, the participation rate was up, but the un unemployment rate, which is what people are talking about here, was worse, up 0.1% to 5.2. So the Aussie is under a bit of pressure. I'd favour still looking to go short. Can we get a retracement? Can we get to yesterday's low? That would be somewhere I'd be focusing on uh, as well as a potential opportunity. So the pound, I'd, I'd prefer the short. Uh, the, Euro, uh, the Euro, can we break that trend line? Uh, the the pound, I don't think I said the pound just there, the short Euro and Aussie short uh, as well. Stocks, I think possibly looking for a bit more risk off in the market is T-notes and gold. Can we get uh, longs? Um, it's quite uh, interesting looking at, at headlines and reaction. If you were to read this, un Australia's unemployment rate holds steady in May you would not have said that the Aussie dollar was near the low of the day following uh, this release. It stayed at 5.2% but was worse than expectations. Uh, you're having uh, comments coming out and uh, certainly from there was an economist at Capital Economics saying the surge in employment in May is unlikely to be sustained and the softness in the economic activity limits employment growth. Uh, given the downturn in da uh, domestic activity and the softness in business surveys, we think the unemployment rate is more likely to rise from here than to fall. Growth in the Australian economy fell to its weakest rate in almost a decade in the first three months of the year. The country has been grappling with a housing downturn and the slowing Chinese economy. Uh, it looks like the next decision is going to be a rate cut. There, it was, you know, take back us back six weeks ago. We were expecting the next one to be a rate cut as well, two in a row. We got one, but then looked like they were going to hold. This data is set here. Uh, it now looks like we are going to get another cut. Uh, China, US situation, if anything, you can say is just stalling. That's not going to help. Looking for the Aussie short today, maybe more medium term as well, is not a bad decision. Uh, to go for. Let's have a quick look over the, the calendar for today just to, to wrap things up. Uh, have I got this up? Yes, I have. Relatively quiet morning. Uh, any any hearsay conservative ballot uh, will be worth keeping an eye on as the pound is coming under a, a bit more pressure this morning. But data-wise scheduled, it's limited. Uh, not expecting too much. You've got a bit of industrial production at 10 a.m. if you're in a position for Euro de-risking um, but it's uh, it's from from April uh, and not expecting too much uh, from that into the afternoon import and export prices at half one with the weekly initial uh, well the initial jobless claims and jobless claims four week average non movers unless wildly out of line uh, so not expecting data to move markets today I'll be looking for trade comments G20 I'll be looking at there we go, DAX just coming down to test that trend line here. Just getting a bit jumpy uh, around that little false break. Worth keeping an eye on uh, where this five minute candle pushes uh, and how that could bring stocks lower. Uh, back to the, the calendars, I just got a bit excited there. Um, it's relatively limited. Speakers, you can see as well, nothing of note there as well. Any questions as usual, please do, uh, do let me know. It's gonna be a day dictated by uh, sentiment rather than uh, data, scheduled data. Conservative results looking about 1 p.m. Can oil sustain its push higher? Will stocks drift lower uh, as safe havens are pushing higher at the moment? Hope you'll have a, a great trading day and rest of the week.